I don't know if you knew this, but there is a major difference in how most TVs handle HDR games versus how they handle HDR movies. You see, when you play an HDR movie, there is usually embedded metadata if it's been correctly produced, which tells the television the maximum peak brightness and average brightness of the title so that the original video signal can be mapped appropriately to the peak brightness and color gamut capabilities of the TV. This is a process known as tone mapping. However, things are entirely different when playing HDR games. Here, I'm playing Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart on the Sony PS5 console, and as you can see for yourself, the SD2086 HDR10 metadata, namely Max DML or Maximum Display Mastering Luminance, Max CLL or Maximum Content Light Level, and Max FALL or Maximum Frame Average Light Level, were all zeroed out. Playing Forza Horizon 5 using the Xbox Series X also yielded the same result as far as ST2086 HDR10 metadata were concerned, with Max DML, Max CLL, and Max FALL all being reported at zero nits. In other words, game consoles such as the PS5 and the Xbox Series X actually do not transmit metadata during HDR gameplay. Without any ST2086 metadata to work with, many TVs would default to a 4000 nit tone curve, which brings about two problems. One, the tone curve would be rolled off earlier when displaying HDR games, causing brighter elements to look dimmer than necessary. And two, if you try to go through the adjust HDR calibration procedure on the PS5, or the HDR calibration screens on the Xbox Series X, a 4000 nit tone curve will push you towards exceedingly high maximum tone matte luminance and maximum full frame tone matte luminance values, resulting in a more washed out HDR presentation with clipping of bright highlight detail in HDRG compliant games. To achieve the highest level of HDR impact and luminance accuracy when playing HDR games, the ideal solution is actually very simple. Just let the game console or in-game engine handle the tone mapping, without the TV or the monitor performing any additional tone mapping. Put another way, the TV should track the ST2084 PQ curve accurately up until panel peak, at which point it should hard clip without any roll-off, just like how a mastering monitor would behave. This is exactly what every 2023 Panasonic OLED TV, including this 42-inch MZ980, does once you select the True Game Picture preset, which sets HDR tone map to off by default, allowing you to set maximum tone map luminance and maximum full frame tone map luminance to 750 nits, resulting in an accurate HDR presentation for HDRG compliant games. In fact, any HDR game whose peak brightness can be set in-game will benefit from the absence of display side tone mapping, avoiding a scenario where double tone mapping would dilute the HDR impact. In true game mode, input lag is also set to fast by default to achieve the lowest latency possible on Panasonic TVs, coming in at 14 milliseconds for a 60 FPS video signal, which can be lowered even further to 9.3 milliseconds once you enable 60 Hz refresh rate, which essentially performs frame doubling to 120 FPS. With a true 120 FPS video signal, input lag measured a super responsive 5.7 milliseconds. Although engaging VRR would increase the latency slightly to around 6.4 milliseconds, due to the MediaTek HDMI 2.1 chipset used, only two out of four HDMI ports are HDMI 2.1 with 40 gigabits per second bandwidth, according to the edit, of which one is the eARC port. However, among TV manufacturers using a similar non-pentonic MediaTek HDMI 2.1 SoC without coprocessor. Panasonic is the one who has coaxed the best out of the chipset on the gaming front. With 4K 120Hz bypass mode enabled, you will be able to enjoy full 4K 120Hz resolution, smoother gradation as demonstrated on this grey ramp pattern from the Display HDR app, as well as full 444 chroma reproduction. Besides HDR luminous accuracy, Panasonic's true game mode also respects the D65 whitepoint unlike the default game mode implemented by many other TV brands, which is normally far too blue out of the box, therefore deviating from the creative intent. To demonstrate, 
Here, I've set up the Panasonic MZ980 OLED beside one of the LG OLEDs which have been very popular among gamers, using a Sony BVM H6310 mastering monitor as reference. Once I reset the true game and game optimizer modes on the Panasonic MZ980 and the LG C3 respectively back to the factory default settings, you can see that the MZ980 came much closer to matching the Sony H6310 in overall brightness and colors, whereas the LG C3 appeared far too garish and blue compared to reference. In fact, Panasonic's true game mode can be thought of as a filmmaker mode for playing games with outstanding color accuracy but significantly lower input lag. Furthermore, true game mode can be calibrated using portrait displays Kalman calibration software, after which the picture preset will be marked by a Kalman logo. Now, some of you gamers out there will be skeptical about whether accurate colors are actually needed for playing games. To prove it one way or another, I've analyzed the skin tones in two Blockbuster PS5 games displayed on the Panasonic OLED, and you can find out the results by clicking here.